Top five Coach Cal replacements. And uh, I'm going to go in order from pie in the sky to three in the middle that I find intriguing and then to one I think is the best fit. Uh, and Scott Drew is not on this list. No. He's not because. Gutless. I, no, I just I just don't see him doing this twice in one offseason. And, and, like, again, he's not one that's known for, like, yeah. hey. It is the Kentucky job. Or even I his get. agent. I get, well, yeah. Well, that needs to be, if this comes and goes and he doesn't, then that needs to be proof in the pudding after this. Yeah. Because if he keeps getting mentioned and mentioned then, and mentioned, yeah. then that's not a coincidence. And, at all. and by yeah. the way, his agent's job is to continue sure to do is. what's ever best. Yeah. But eventually. You can get yourself sideways with a fan base that 100% adores you. Well, I'm at rule. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, and look, I, it was about to happen with Art Bryles before everything else yep. because yep. it was Tech and then Texas and yep. all of that. So, in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. There was all those things that were going on. So, number five, the pie in the sky, Billy Donovan. Does he want to come back to college? I doubt it. He's the coach of the Bulls right now. Uh, but uh, this is a guy who's got two national titles under his belt. Um, was at Kentucky uh, under Patino uh, when they you know, were winning back then in the 90s. Uh, I think you know players that he could easily come back in with NI on all that. But maybe now it's just easier to be in the NBA where your general manager says, all right, we're paying this guy $30 million. Uh, go – Go coach him. Is that the AD on the left? I think that's Billy. Billy Donovan. Is it really? Like him now. Like, oh, that's man, Florida has... Billy, and then that's okay. I, I, today I, I Billy. I have not really seen, I guess, him of late. Okay. Time waits for no man. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't think he's going to leave an NBA gig for uh, yeah. for Kentucky. I, I More than that, though, like, why go back? Yeah. I got it. I'm just not a big believer in, like, you know, I mean, I guess there's certain, like, Bill Snyder, that's a unique situation. Like, they needed him to come back. I don't think Kentucky's like, we got to have Billy Donovan come back. I think if you're Billy Donovan, you've kind of already done your time there and you've moved on. And, um, I, yeah, I, I just don't, that just doesn't vibe with me. Yeah. Yeah. Number four, Sean Miller. Is it Xavier now? Was it Arizona? Has done a good job. Now, this year they were, they were ravaged by injuries, but, He's someone I think could come in and fit uh, at Kentucky and and take their resources and go up. Uh, but I don't think he's near the top of the list. I'm just talking about guys that they could get that would take the job that I think would do a good job. And maybe also, and look, they, look, they don't need to go with, here's the hottest guy doing the hottest thing. It's the best guy. Because they did that with Billy Gillespie, and he was not a fit at Kentucky what at all. What a disaster. It was It was absolutely a disaster. So uh, I think Sean Miller would be a fit. I just don't think that he's going to be um, a sexy enough hire for them right now. He would have been if he was leaving Arizona before yes. that yeah. NCAA stuff. Or was it Adidas? Uh, yeah, he was always all in. No, I, mean, I guess his was DeAndre Ayton, right? Okay. So yeah. Number three. Todd Golden in Florida. This is the young up-and-comer. Uh, and if you want to poach from an SEC team that thinks they're trying to get their groove back, this would be it. He's only 39 years old. Uh, probably would have made maybe even a deeper run had they not lost one of their, well, their only real post player this year, um, you know, right in, in the tournament. But he's uh, he has them on the rise. They're very good. They're very athletic. Um, he's bringing the, the, the shine back to Florida basketball. Uh, and, you know, uh, you can. There's another guy on this list that you can do a two for one, uh, which is you can poke uh, poach somebody from a conference rival uh, and help your program at the same time. Number two, Mark Pope at BYU. Look, they love the style, bombing threes, super aggressive, never out of any game, uh, and he's one of their own. He was on the '96 championship team. Uh, he's got a ring. I. Like, this one makes too much sense not to do because it's so overly practical, but he hasn't done probably enough at BYU yet to get the fans excited. But uh, them coming into the Big 12 this year and then making the NCAA tournament shows you he's a pretty damn good coach if he can do that in year one uh, at BYU. And that would be, I mean, that would be very, very interesting to John see Mark Clay, Hope go back home. John Clay earlier saying that, yeah, that's a name that's kind of a dark horse name, but probably not sexy enough right now for definitely Kentucky, not. I wouldn't think. Yeah. Definitely but hell, not. I like yeah. him. I like his yeah, I, mean, I, like I agree style with the other too. stuff, but he's definitely yeah. not a big enough I, name for them. I'm all no. about... I'm all about practicality. Sure. I mean, like, that's the thing. And I think that sometimes this is lost in things. I, I mean, Texas A&M has been guilty of this uh, across hires over many sports for, for a while where, 
you know, let's let's get a show them how many, you know, bags of money we can throw at them and get this big name. Well, is that guy the right guy for you? You're still you know? waiting on that person. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing so. is, though, is you're spending big regardless. Yeah. Because whoever's coming in is going to get a big contract. Yeah. They're not going to be like the 15th best, you know, best paid in the SEC or anything. Yeah. But I, I just think people are scared of taking the risk because there's such a huge investment involved. Mm-hmm. It's like that's the kind of thing that can cost you your athletic director job or mm-hmm. your – you know, analyst job or whatever. So um, better to go with the guys who have been there, done it, and have proven they can do it as opposed to the the unknown, so to speak. But, yeah, I mean, I totally understand the appeal and why his name's getting mentioned. I just don't think that that's going to be, like, the guy no. to replace Calipari. No. Yeah. That would be the guy that if they start running up against the like, look, I'm I'm good where I am. I'm getting a yeah, lot of money. If it starts to drag like a little if bit. It's, yeah. yeah. If, you know. With all due respect to, to yeah, Mark Yeah, if Pope. it's just like, this is not for me right now. And look, we saw, I'll compare it to Texas post-Mac Brown, like where they thought they could just call up anybody. And they're like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Eh. Like, because that can happen. You know, you can be like, you know, look, I, I appreciate you calling, but, you know, things are good where I'm at right now. And number one, I think the best fit would be Nate Oates in Alabama. Um, you know, he just got his team into the Final Four. He's already in the SEC. He showed what he can do. Didn't uh, he just get his who, buyout? Yeah, his buyout's really high. Didn't yeah. Scott Drew just get a yeah, pump Scott, too? Scott's yeah. buyout is lower than Nate Oates. But... Again, if we don't really know that. If you but. were here throwing around money and you're Kentucky, like nobody right now, the Kentucky fans, because a lot of them are ready to pay 34 million. Right. They'll willingly pay less than that to get another coach, just as the signing fee, as the what is it the like the Japanese baseball league does is the posting fee yeah, where yeah. you've got to send them. changed a little bit. Yeah, but, yeah. but like you know, to sign Daisuke Matsuzaka, you, you had to send like them twenty the, uh, million dollars yeah, or whatever it was. Yeah, the Hiroshima Carp. You got to. Yeah, yeah, they've yeah. got to. They've got to get that money to make up for it. So yeah, that's that's probably worth it to most Kentucky fans. If Mitch Barnhouse goes up and says, well, we don't want to, you know, hire a coach with a big buyout. They're going to be like, no, 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 no. That does not matter right now. We are, you know, we just lost our coach. We're fine with it. Like it worked out probably for everybody, but let's not get, let's not pinch pennies right here. Yeah. Well, there's a very interesting, uh, situation that could be brewing here, but I mean, I think, you know, uh, the, the names all make sense. Uh, Nate Oates, that would create another domino effect. Also, that <laughs> Alabama job looks a hell of a lot better than it used to, right? I mean, yeah. that was looking suddenly like a, a real prime spot to, for and, somebody else to land. And I'm also, like, I probably should have put Chris, Chris Beater on the, this list, too, for but that job. Not a but, top five. but, yeah, he, but it's yeah. not, yeah, so. Yeah, I mean, who knows? But here's the most interesting part. Like, Billy Donovan, that would be tremendous. That'd be, like, the lifelong, you know, the, the dream that a lot of people have had since he was an assistant coming back. But just the NBA gig, I, I don't think that makes sense for him but yeah i mean they all they all make sense we could dissect them all um why they would work and why they wouldn't but here's the the interesting part is i don't think there's anybody and i don't know the dude but i know he's got a huge following for a reason he's been very successful as a as a person in this type of a space you know whether just be covering college athletics like that's just in general but matt jones from kentucky sports radio uh put up a post and it was passed along uh, and I saw it on a different board. Uh, so unless I'm just getting totally fooled by Photoshop, which I don't think's really ever happened on this show, and I've seen, a, I've looked around, a couple of other people have said, like, hey, did y'all see that Matt Jones post? Here's what he apparently said, and I'm sorry if this is paywall, but it is what it is. There's a lot of chatter out there that maybe Calipari is trying to find a way to stay. It sounds insane, I know, but that is making its way around the UK world. Uh, he goes on to say that he's got nothing from the school in that regard, but that uh, some messaging coming from Calipari and related or Calipari related sources is picking up steam, and it would explain why no one's heard anything today and why he was out in public walking his dog and then no comment at a local TV guy. So don't it's rule out the possibility, hours, right? Yeah, yeah. Don't rule out the possibility that this all ends yeah. up with us not talking about a job being open well, in, in Lexington, Kentucky. But that was Matt Jones, and I, if that was anybody else, I'm not even mentioning it. Yeah. But since it is somebody who's yeah, very good. clearly in the know, yep. um, I thought that was worth well, passing not, along. So it's very interesting what's to come here um, he, potentially. He's also just throwing out possibility because 